How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Pop Links, and I'm back with another book review. Do 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 do. You like that, right? But anyway, I like to get straight to it. So today's book review is Black Genesis by Thomas Thomas Brophy and Robert Bouval. This book is phenomenal because. I don't know, throughout history, you know, a lot of people try to disregard that Egypt had African origins. And people would fast talk and be like, it was Persian, it's Roman, it's it's Greece, it's Greek. You know what I mean? They would just go on and on, which I'm not saying that none of those cultures didn't come later on. But if we're talking about the original origins of ancient Egypt, we got to dig deep. And where that starts is in Sudan. And there's another place, Chad. I'm not gonna go too, too crazy because there's a lot of information in this book and it's just something you just have to read. So first and foremost, I would like to start with some of the main locations. The main locations are Jepa Luwena, Gilf, it says Luwena, but it's really Jepa Luwena, Gilf Kabir, and Nabta Playa, right? These places were the benchmark for where people would migrate and create this triangle. And these two places are places are important too, but we're gonna get to them. So what they basically found out was people from those parts of the world that were using certain pottery, they were using certain motifs, they were using certain design styles, were trading with each other. And in the middle of the desert, they incorporated a trade route. Also, they created a monolith that directed them to where they could go and kept track of the seasons based on the stars. Insane with no technology when you think about it. They have no remote telemetry data. They don't have satellites. They don't have anything, any type of technology that we use today to survey land and look from the sky down and, you know, look at the topography. Like, we don't have any, they didn't have any of that. They have none of that. <laughs> and they were still, still doing all this amazing stuff. And I want to touch bases on some of the things that they were talking about in here, like the Bible, the Hamites, and the Black man. Because in religion, we like to discuss that Black people are the children of Ham, are cursed by Ham. But little do people know is that those are actually locations. Those names are allegorical. Those are locations. So, right here. In the book of Genesis, Ham is one of the sons of Noah. Ham's children is Meshurim, Cush, Put, and Canaan, or Canine. But in the Bible, the names of Ham's children are also used to denote geographical lo locations. Egypt is Meshurim, Ethiopia is Cush. Libya is put, and Palestine is canon. So that just sheds a little light right there on a little information people might not know. And this book is filled with information from dynasties and kings and queens that tried to disregard the information that was being passed on, people who came into power, who wanted to take the political game, along with the religious game and tie them together and shift the culture and their image. There's a lot of that throughout history. And when people talk about Egypt, they're always normally talking about the dynastic Egypt. Very rarely do you hear people talk about the pre-dynastic period of Egypt. Same thing with Africa. When people talk about Africa, they talk about Africa after colonialism. Very rarely do I hear people talk about Africa before colonialism. And this is what the bifurcation and ideology comes to. Because if you don't have an understanding of where you come from, then you don't know where you're going. So I can tell you anything about yourself if you don't know where you truly come from. You know what I mean? Most people don't even know. I don't even want to get into it. I was going to talk about Mopa Gepwe, but we're going to keep that out for a whole different section. Um, there is a professor in here. He was responsible for doing the DNA testing or the genetic testing for the mummies. And they didn't want him to do it. They eventually let him do it and it came back African, but they didn't want to let him do it. They didn't want to let him do it at first because I had this uh, inkling that they had an idea 
of what he was going to do and they didn't want him to come out with the truth so they banned him from it all this is in the book and he was able to prove immensely from the the language the art style the the way um these people care for their animals i mean their tra their traditional values they can tell that these values were the same values that migrated from the core of ethiopia and extrapolated outward chad sudan and egypt and a lot of these people would meet up in these particular places and exchange their ideas and their trinkets and their goods for to better each other's life but not only that but to strengthen the integrity between the community and their traditional values and i think that's something that needs to be brought up when understanding ancient egypt because we only hear about ancient Egypt from the colonial perspective or the, the domesticated lens, the lens that was already put out for us through the people that conquered them or solipsized them. So with that said, I just wanna show you some artwork. They go through some, some beautiful places here. Um, that. It's Robert Bouval and some of the Egyptians. Look, Robert, Robert Bouval grew up in Egypt. See the cave art and the cows associated with a nomadic pastoralist, the cattles. The cattle were quote unquote always the pacifists, that's what they associated, and the people who were the conquerors were the people riding the horses. So you always have, whenever you hear those two uh, paradigmatic expressions throughout history, the, the people with the cattle were always the people that were quote unquote peaceful and they were always conquered by people with horses. That's why cattle are always so important because that was the way of life. That was your nourishment. You got your milk. Um, they didn't really kill the cattle, but you know, if they came down to it for food, then that's what they needed to do. But the cattle is a sign of wealth. And also, a lot of fungus that we know, which is touching on another book review that I did, Plants of the Gods, um, we, we know they use fungus for ancient uh, visionary experiences. And we know that some of these fungus have a, are soprophytic, meaning they break down what's in the environment. And with that said, uh, cows are ungulate animals, double ungulate at that, and they poop a lot. And then these fungus have a relationship with the dung. So when you're out there and you know, you're looking for a source of food, you flip a cow patty, chances are you'll find a, a mushroom. And then you eat the mushroom looking for sustenance and lo and behold, you'll have a visionary experience. And then through generations of that, people uh, venerated that the that the mushroom was associated with the cow so that's why the cow became holy in a sense before you know religion took over and changed it to what it is today um can you see it see the cave art with the cows and stuff herding the animals and this is phenomenal this is this is historical lineage right here this building is the temple of hafar in dendera Yeah, this, and, um, yeah, this is one of the books that I really like. I read it a long time ago, so I'm sorry if I gave a vague review of what this book is about. But um, basically, it's about the ancient origins of ancient Egypt. And if you're really interested in ancient Egypt and the history there, then I suggest you read this book. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I want to thank you for spending your time with me, for watching another one of my book reviews. And make sure you like share, subscribe, and I will be dropping a lot more book reviews because I, I read a lot of books. <laughs> All right, have a good day.